Well, it happened. We went back and hung out with the Sticks crew again. We saw everything. Nothing was off limits. The crew was so gracious to show us what goes on with a show uh, touring with legends like that and putting on shows that large. So many people in the music industry have no grasp of what it takes to put on a show like that day in, day out. And we had full access to everything. Mark the drum tech walks us through everything on that kit, the head choice, how he tunes it, which he doesn't talk about a whole lot. And then we have Chris Cookie Hoff coming in after, the front of house engineer for Sticks, talking about the mic choices, how he mics them. If you've ever been to a live show with them, you know the drums sound insane. Todd is a killer drummer, and this is a look behind the scenes of what they can achieve live. Real quick, this video has no sponsor, but there are a lot more coming, so hit that subscribe button. 77% of you guys out there are not subscribed. I have real big dreams of getting that number as low as possible. Now this is a super long video, and the rest of the videos in this are super long, but there is a ton of information here, and there's more coming for guitars, running monitors, which was mind blowing. That front of house with Cookie, who just will not stop sharing all of his knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Buckle up, because this is the first one in a whole lot of really fun videos. Can I come get you doing drums? Are those guys at lunch or something? It's given us a chance to like, Mark time. Right. chill. So, you should talk to Mark for a minute here. Oh, hey, Mark. Oh, I didn't even see you there. So you never got a chance to talk to him. Yeah. Because he was sleeping. No, actually, he was probably working, doing hey, his second I'm job. Hey, I'm Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Mark takes care of, of Todd's kit each and every day. Tunes God. it. He's got his routine. This thing's beautiful. Would you want to Would you want to walk us down what it is? Would you be okay with that? Let me uh, check. I love it. He's fact checking himself. Yeah, I love it. And part of what we do is he sets up to this point because I got to come through and do cabling, which has to sit on the rack. If he if he puts if he flies all his symbols all his times, I can't get in there and I can't route some of the cable. Mm -hmm. So he gets to this point. I come through and do cables and mics, he finishes it, but sometimes I have to go off and do something else so I come back and finish patching stuff. But it's a, the whole day is like this, as you see. Like, yeah. like right now I'm waiting for the, the local lighting tech to get the truss out of the way before I can finish my job. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of this each and every day. Is it this truss you're talking about right here? Yeah, downstairs truss. But this is, I mean, this is an example of typical thing on, on tour is you have, I have two 12 pair fan outs plus another six pair fan that I, that I have to patch. But instead of doing single XLRs on the male end, mm -hmm. you're making one oh. connection. So there's never a cross patch unless it's at the microphone, right? Right. But in this situation, it, this is a custom made loom, so things are to length, it's labeled. Sometimes I mispatch kick one and kick two. I, I'm old, sometimes <laughs> red and red and orange look, 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 diff, look the same in blue light, so. But yeah, so there, there's pair one, two, three. Here's pair two and two, three. Here's three, two, three pins, right? Four, two, three. Jeez. So that, that's the biggest thing that, um, I learned when I came out of college and went started work, working at a major audio company is it's the same thing. There's still there's still an XLR on the other end of this that plugs into the stage rack. Mm -hmm. It's just that you just connected 56 channels or you just connected 12 or 24 or 40. It's just at a bigger scale and it's faster and there's things that help you speed up your day and reduce errors. So this is part Man. of it. But anyway, here's Mark. Let me steal this mic from you real quick. Yep. Thank you, sir. You want to pop that on your collar? Anywhere, or anywhere is comfortable. I appreciate you talking to yeah. us, man. Is that all right? Yeah, that's perfect. So, I'm a guitar player, but I'm a studio guy, so I know enough about drums to be dangerous, <laughs> but... Well. I like to say drummers have friends too. They're called guitar players. <laughs> <laughs> Bass players. Yeah. Bass players, eh. Yeah, <laughs> you are like actually our right hand, really. That's it's like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. <laughs> so, Last time, last year when we saw it, I, we kind of just glanced at it, but I had so many comments like, what about the drums? Like, I don't know, I didn't get a chance. Well, it's a Pearl Masterworks custom kit. Um, the shells are their studio recipe. So the interior uh, is actually two plies of gum. Mm -hmm. And you can see that better over here, actually, how it looks. Every attention to detail is spot on. So most drum companies don't even finish the interior of the oh. drums. So this is, again, two plies of gum, four plies of maple that it sandwiches. And then this is uh, called uh, Quilted Cameroon Black Limba, which is a wood from Africa. The uh, 
hardware on this is all rose gold plated. Jeez. How much of the wood choice is an aesthetic thing versus like a sonic thing? Uh, it's definitely both for sure. I mean, this is just a gorgeous looking wood. That's a gorgeous looking interior. Yes, it Maple, is. Uh, Maple's characteristic in general is kind of a loud, boomier sound. Mm -hmm. um, but the gum definitely kind of evens out the tone stuff. But the kit, uh, the sizes, there's actually a six inch Tom, which is not up yet because Cookie's wiring the kit. Mm -hmm. There's a six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 inch gong drum, and then a five by 14 snare. And what are the sizes on the kicks? Uh, those are both 22. And with, with this many drums, this close in size, how particular are you with like a tuning scheme? Uh, you know, some people have asked me to do tuning videos and I'm not even gonna go near that because mm -hmm. everybody has their own style and think For that sure. they know everything about everything. So, uh, you know, I don't need to have the, that dynamic happening in my life. <laughs> so, uh, but I tune to uh, basically the song going to the races. Dun 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 and there's a couple other ones and there's another there's a couple that i use like um uh what was that jazz song yeah in the mood you can do that with three drums and you can check that between any three drum drums at interval uh and then fascinating you could also play the uh what's the game show jeopardy yeah you could do that as well so those are kind of the three uh, intervals that I check things with. And the bottom heads are usually, I take them about a full step above where the batter is. Um, okay, and that's which gives it a nice pitch, pitch bend. Yeah, pitch bend down. The rack on this is, uh, all the hardware is Pearl as well. Uh, Pearl chrome plated the rack for him, which is not something that's normally offered. Uh, he uses his uh, Promark signature sticks, which are maple. Uh, the model number is an SD330. A little inside trivia, 330 that was named after uh, he came up with that because it's his anniversary with his wife. That's the Aww. date. And at the time, I was actually working for Promark Drumsticks, and so that's it was kind of nice to see how all that, all that took place and now come full circle working for him. I've known Todd 21 years at this point. I knew Polly, his former tech. Uh, it's It's been a, you know, it's a hard thing that, to lose a, a guy like Polly, but, um, you know, we all miss him dearly. But as they say, the show's got to go on, and I'm very fortunate to work for a friend. So, yeah. and everybody uh, has welcomed me with open arms. A couple of the guys I already knew, except Cookie. He's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you can also see on his kit, you know, his logo is, uh, his logo, Todd Zuckerman, mm -hmm. is done in the vein of the Sticks logo. And it's also, inlaid on the shell and that's all gold leaf right there man now what about head choice for something like this head choice on all the toms is clear ambassadors both top and bottom uh, just a nice open tone uh, on the snare drum it's ambassador hazy on the bottom mm -hmm. and a coated ambassador on the top with a gel a coated ambassador yep. how often do you have to change those uh, the snare head gets changed, the, the batter side gets changed every show. Yeah. The toms, uh, the batters will get changed typically every three shows, sometimes four. It just depends on the schedule. This week it's going to be four because uh, Sturgis te uh, technically would be a head change day and that is not a day to change heads. So <laughs> we're, we're going to ride that one out. <laughs> so um, what I, do you what differences do you notice like why go with an ambassador as opposed to like an emperor which seems to be the a big choice that you see a lot of people make which yeah. I use ambassadors in the studio too but I, I'm interested to see your well thought. I mean it's it's personal taste for everybody on my drums at home I like the clear emperors I like a little bit more of a thuddier mm -hmm. tone whereas the ambassador is more of an open tone and that's what Todd prefers Interesting. Uh, the, the three floor toms will have some gels on it. The 14 gets a very small gel. And sometimes we've even run it without a gel on it. Uh, the 16 will have one larger diameter gel. And then the 18 will have two diameter gels on it. Um, and then with the nature of, of gum, it's just of what I'm not familiar with. Is it, a, is it really resonant? Like, is it a lengthy note? Um, it's pretty lengthy. Um, 
but again, the way that it's tuned, the, the pitch bend kind of brings it out fairly quick. Um, oh, I hear I'm being paid. Oh, can you pause that? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you guys let me know when I can swing on? They were paid, Jimmy. Um, his drum heads, his custom heads are made by a company called Drum Art. Mm -hmm. uh, he plays Sabian sig uh, cymbals. He has his signature Sessions ride, which is pretty awesome. And we can pull that out here. Actually, I could probably pull it out right now if you want to see it. Well, yes. Why not? Oh, jeez. Are we in anybody's way right here? Okay. Just yell at us. Oh, yeah, so God. this is his 22-inch uh, Sabian Sessions ride. Uh, this is his signature ride. This was actually the first run of, I think, 250 of them, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so initially when this came out there was only a run of 250 and they were signed i believe and came with a certificate well the ride when he posts his videos on social media everyone just loves this thing and it's a really versatile ride it's got a great bell sound uh, mm. and a lot of crashability but also definition because of the hammering um, so people would always comment when can we get this or you know and it was sold out so sabian uh heard you know, people asking and asking and asking, and they finally just put this out in production. And it just came out maybe two months ago or so, and has been doing really well. Huh. So you can buy this in the retail stores. The only difference is uh, really a little bit of the artwork that's on the symbol is different versus the 250, obviously not signed. Um, but yeah, it's a great, great sounding symbol. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, the bell is cutting, it cuts, like, you know. That's clear, and in this genre. Breaking glass is yeah. pretty is awesome. That right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I liked it right when the first time I heard it. Some of the other guys didn't like it right away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, yep, that sounds like a ride. Sounds like a good ride to me. Yeah, and the neat, the, the cool thing about Sabian is, uh, especially the hand hammered stuff, hammering a cymbal in general is such an art. And there's uh, literally like two or three guys that hammer cymbals at Sabian, and that's it. And because it's such an art and done by a person, no two are really going to sound the same. However, it has the same characteristic because of the way that they do the hammering. So yeah, it's pretty cool. That is super cool, man. So go buy one. <laughs> but Artisan Customs uh, makes all of his stuff with the exception of that one. And the name of that company is escaping me, but that's called the Drum Waiter, which is uh, holds his cell phone, his drum key, drinks. This is his ear pack. This is also bl uh, the uh, Cameroon Black Limba. This is all hand carved. Um, Pull it out a little bit. So again, he's running wired ears right yeah. here? Okay. Oh, I see the pack. Last yeah. Cut. yeah, Artisan Customs makes this. His stick bucket over there, he doesn't use a stick bag. Uh, his stick holder. All of the guy's guitar pick holders are made from the same company. Um, Here's, does the tube light up on this guy? Yes, <laughs> and that, that's all they are, is little that's LED awesome. lights. <laughs> so every attention to detail is, is not left unturned. That is so cool. And you know, his kit in general is set so tight that he says it's a game of millimeters on his kit and he's right. Uh, some of the things that are positioned are just like so tight together. It's pretty wild. but. He is a master at what he does. He's awesome. And I'll never forget the first time that I saw him on TV. I was just blown away. Like, who is this guy? <laughs> and uh, here I am working for him now. So it's pretty neat. Dude, that's awesome. I want to start though, here's when I was doing monitor, monitors for these guys. He was really good, good about using analogies. We were doing a flight and I like the way the kick drum sounded. And he goes, he, and he's playing. He's looking over and he goes, sounds like I'm playing on a Donna Summer session. I'm like, oh, kick drum's too long, got it. <laughs> <laughs> then we had condensers on his mic, so this is back when he, he only had five toms, and he'd do a fill, and we would both hear a click somewhere, and I, I can't tell where it was in the stereo field, but I happened to be listening to his mix, like which microphone was, had a loose connection. He's playing, while he's playing, he put one stick in his, in his mouth, keep doing it, and he'll tell me what time it was, and grab the stick and go on, but in time three, okay. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. Dude, you know, all this is such muscle memory that he's able to do stuff like that. It, it, it will crack you up when you see it. Yeah, I heard him tell somebody one time, uh, I think the question was asked, do you need to uh, refresh yourself with the songs? And he's like, no, I've learned them already. Why do I need to do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's true. He's, he's pretty awesome at everything. He's very in tune with everything that's going on around him. 
Um, and he knows what he likes, and it's, it's cool to watch him work. Okay, and Britt is really good at about describing what he doesn't like about something or what he's looking for. That's right. Yeah. How often mm -hmm. does that happen? He said, I don't like it. Well, what's, what do you want to like about it? I, I don't know. I just don't like it. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. really good about using analogy, description. You're always able to figure out. Yeah, you know, and speaking of the analogy, one of them is that he uses is he likes his snare drum to sound like a cream pie, as if it's getting smashed in your face. And this ah. drum in particular, out of all of the drums, people always ask, well, how do you tune that one? Or like, boy, that sounds so fat and awesome, you know, how do you do it? And you can really just hear that it's very low tuned. There's not yeah. a lot of tension. There's enough for him to be able to rebound off of, but the secret is just simply taking it down low, bringing it up a little bit for playability, and sticking a gel on it, and keeping the bottom head um, tight, but not real, real tight. And what you're hearing on his videos is his uh, dedicated uh, camera mix. So, um, But it's funny, when I first started and I heard the snare and I was like, oh God, really? That sounds horrible. And then you hear what Cookie does to it uh -huh. and how Evan makes it sound in the mix. And it's just like, wow, okay, I get it. <laughs> this sounds, are those, are the strands fairly loose as well? Or um, yeah, loose? not, yeah, you don't want to put them too tight or else you'll choke it out. Right. Uh, and it, the, you know, there's so many different snare wire companies out there that, you know, people think, oh, is he, it's got to be using the best snare wires. Nope, these are the cheap Taiwanese uh, snappy snares, if you will. <laughs> so <laughs> nothing special about them by any means. That's awesome. He loves this vintage sonar uh, hi-hat stand. Um, he's, you know, this is something that he used when he was younger and just loves the way that it feels, very buttery, soft to the touch. Um, and he also sets his drums up ergonomically too. Uh, he plays traditional, so the traditional players yep. back in the day would have their snare kind of tilted away from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you'll notice, you probably see it a little bit more back here, the kick drums are offset. His right one is toward a little closer to him than the left one is. Oh yeah. And they're almost facing straight out, so the pedals are not really angled like huh. your feet are. He, he loves playing them on the side. Oh. And that's how it's comfortable for him. And, you know, Jeez. who's to argue? And there's right, people that yeah. will love to argue with you. Well, that's improper and that's incorrect technique. And ergonomically, that's not right. But, hey, who's going to argue with him? For sure. <laughs> but what's cool is, you know, the way your body motions, you know, swings to the right. Part of that is, you know, the way he's, his toms are set. Aesthetically, somebody might have the 12-inch the tom out a little bit more on this side but when you're swinging around it just makes more sense to have it in line with the way your body moves man his uh sticks again they're maple uh every stick is weighed out at the factory and then i uh, also weigh them so the three stands for 53 grams so each stick is 53 grams uh is that so he can grab a match if one yeah, breaks yep. okay so you know pretty much they will all match no matter what uh, acceptable range would be like a 52 and a half or even a 54, but 53 is the choice weight. Well, what is that? You said that was his custom stick. And what is that? What would that be close to? Like if I were talking like a 5A, 5B? Uh, or... I would say this is probably more like a 5B okay. diameter. Uh, I can't remember. There was a time where I knew all the specs of his stick and I just don't remember. I know it's all on his website too. Okay as awesome. well as Promark's website. Uh, I guess another cool thing since you're here is, uh, so he's got a fan here, here, and there. This particular fan has a, a, a PVC pipe going through the step there, which connects to uh, one of the Icy Breeze air conditioning units. Oh my gosh. So pretty cool, <laughs> literally pretty cool. <laughs> So yeah, that's yeah. wild. We could probably go on and on about this a little bit more, but everything else is oh, I don't escaping me. So, time, and man. I have some symbols to fly. No, that's sure. fine. Yeah, I'll yeah, appreciate it. it. Thank you very much. Thanks. I'll Thank steal you. that mic from you, and then I'll let you do your thing, man. Looking over here, but he's being very humble. He's a fantastic drum tuner. Okay, so mic wise, I'm not familiar with the overheads. They're really nice. Uh, oh my God. What is the model number? SCX25A. Cardio condensers, okay. three of them. There's a two on the overhead and there's a one under under mic on the ride. Okay. Uh, under micing, okay, yep. Yeah, that's what I, I thought. I wanna make sure the model numbers are right. ADX51 on the chimes and the two hi-hats. Okay. 
Actually, at front of house, what I do is I gate this thing off the snare top mic. The snare top mic hits, it closes the gate on there. But anytime he's not doing that, he, he's free and open to do all this. Okay. I thought about taking that as like a, like a trashy mic. Yeah. I played with it a little bit, but yeah, it got too weird out here. It's too much PA and noise. Uh, you know, yeah, you can do it in the studio. I can't, oh, for uh, sure. I can't really do it here so much. <laughs> I so would it, like a harmonica mic, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it closes on every snare hit, but when he's not hitting the snare, it's open. So you hear stuff back here. Sometimes you hear the wind blowing the chimes. I'm like, what is it? Oh, it's that mic. So D twos on D2's most on of toms. the toms, and then it looks yep. like it transitions to D fours. I love D twos, or I yeah. really like D twos. Yeah, they seem pretty neutral to me. I five on snare top and bottom. You okay. can see the bottom is. Oh yeah. All, this is all on drum hardware to kind of keep it together and keep the floor clean. Okay. Stuff like that. So that that goes underneath and does that. Um, D six. D six. There's beta ninety ones inside. Okay. D six is at his low beta. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. And then we got a D6 inside this gong drum over here, inside the 20. I get asked a lot if we have triggers on these drums. People are like, do you have triggers? No, this is all acoustic, but it's a great source. That's, that's the start of it, you know? Well, and even watching it last year, like you can yeah. see the effort that goes in on stage to tuning the kit to sound great. Yeah. And then taking the time to set the mics up, like it, the drums sound incredible at these shows. <laughs> <laughs> so great drummer, great drum kit, great drum tech. Yeah, and it's, I turn it's it on, the turn fundamentals it exercise to the peak form. Um, Smart link. Sure. <laughs> look at this. I know. So I think a lot of people, if they were to look at this, they would say there's something special going on. But really, you're just doing the fundamentals on a larger scale. On a larger scale, exactly. And that was my biggest revelation when I came into out of college, came to the the live touring sound was was realized. Oh, it's the same stuff. Yeah. It's just a lot more of it. Right. You know, like, how do you, how do you feed the PA? Well, you feed, you feed several amplifiers the same signal, and then amplifiers feed different spe speaker boxes. I mean, that was, the, that was the revelation I had in college. Like, how do you how do, you do this? Because I'm used to, like, an amplifier with feeding left into a speaker box, but I never thought about how to do this. Analog split is easy. You just solder a bunch of cables together, and they just transfer the, the, de the signal across. Digital, you just split it digital. Oh, you, thanks, man. <laughs> Dude, thank you. When I was telling you his kid is a game of millimeters, this is a perfect example. Oh, oh I forgot to check gosh. this too. Yep. Yeah. There's awesome. nothing You're done, there. Right? Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This is planned out. And then also this one here, because if this thing rotates a little bit, then this, the ride hits it. But if you, if you come right, <laughs> come right here, you can see cow. how close it is. Yeah. What's the difference between amateur and professional? Tolerances. I mean, that's really... I will never complain about miking a tight kit ever again. Yeah. <laughs> and he knows, he, he knows, like, if I'm miking stuff, don't hit the drum. How many times have you been miking it and the drummer's hitting it? Like, oh. nope, I'm done. Yeah. You guys are just so polite to each other. We all, we all respect each other's abilities and each other as a person. And you know? it shows. All right, so lift is going out of the way. Oh my God, there are all these people in here now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on the front fills and then I'll do the full PA. Okay. Listen here. I might head over to Monitor World. Yep. 